Races such as the Tour de France are where a lot of manufacturers will refine and test their new technology, pursuing the gold standard of lighter, stronger and faster. Occasionally though, technology does evolve away from racing, specifically for the recreational rider. But I don't think we've ever been in a position like we are now with disc brakes, which is to say that those of us not racing get to use technology that is far superior in almost all respects to those who are racing. Yeah, disc brakes like these ones from SRAM Red are banned from competition. Now there are a number of concerns contributing to the reasoning behind that. So we've come to some of the most brutal and punishing terrain that the Tour de France has to offer to see if we can lay those concerns to rest. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the top of the Col de Tourmalet. I think it's, I think it's Tourmalet, isn't it? I don't think so. It's T at the end. Tourmalet. Yeah. Tourmalet. <laughs> Firstly, overheating. Now, as you brake, friction from the pads on the rotor causes it to heat up. If the brakes were to get hot enough, then eventually your brake performance will fade as the brake fluid in the calipers also heats up as a result. Now, to get them to heat up like that, you need to brake repeatedly from high speeds and for a long time. So, in a race like the Tour de France, the riders push their bikes and therefore their brakes really, really hard on descents. That is, therefore, something of a concern. Yeah, now rather than just ride down the hill as fast as we could, we thought we'd do something which takes it to another level entirely. So I'm going to do this descent with my back brake dragging the entire way down. If I can help it, I won't use the funds tool, just the back. This is the most extreme scenario that we could dream up. So let's see what happens after nearly 18 kilometres of descending. I'm going to go ahead if that's all right, mate. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I'll catch you up. Well, no, I just don't really want to be anywhere, just, just in case, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Right, how was it? Well, there you have it, somewhat undramatically, but much to my relief, brake works absolutely fine the whole way down. So a full 21 minutes of descending, average speed of 45 k's now. Could have gone faster, but uh, brake was rubbing. Nice. Undeniably though, those discs are now going to be super hot. So if there was going to be a massive pile up at the bottom of the Col de Tourmalet, then potentially red hot discs would be flying around all over the place. Hence, something of a crash hazard and something that people are worried about. So, let's test it out. This was destined to be someone's lunch. It is a piece of chorizo. So let's see what happens when we put it against your red hot rotor. Do you want to give it a spin? Admittedly, that's not severed, but I suppose that would be a nasty cut. Ooh, yeah, I'm Do glad we used the chorizo, because we were going to use our finger, weren't we, to prove it? We were, yeah. Well, yeah, your finger, but, um, well, there we go. However, to my mind, there are other things that are worse. If you threw this chorizo out the car, 50 kilometers an hour, it would probably look a bit worse, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Tarmac, as I said, is very hard. What happens if we stick it in your spokes? Oh. So, are disc brakes <laughs> any more dangerous <laughs> than spokes? Ouch. Right, well, we'd better head back up to the top because actually we've got another test to do. So, put the bikes in the car. No, 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 we might as well ride up, mate. Just let me pick up my lunch first. It's a long way. This is where you're going to be really missing out. And it is a concern for the pros. Disc brakes are heavier. At the minute, the disc bike is going to be about 500 grams more than an equivalent rim brake bike. Yeah, although to be fair, I think the fact that they have been banned by the UCI has meant that lightweight hasn't been a priority, not yet at least. Right. Now, the extra weight actually comes 150 grams from the SRAM red levers and calipers here versus their rim brake equivalent. And the rest of that weight comes from the fact that manufacturers do have to beef up their frame set somewhat. But let's face it, the pros actually, they do have to add artificial weight to their bikes when they're racing to meet the UCI minimum limit. Yeah, that is true. And it is not hard to imagine a disc bike coming in at below 6.8 kilos. And especially the manufacturers really turn their attention to it. Yeah. In the meantime, You've just got a great excuse. Yeah, I, I yeah, I do need them these days, I must admit. Anyway, anything I leave to you up here, I've kept up well so far, 
I will more than make up for down the other side. <laughs> you think? I guarantee it. Guarantee? Yeah. That is pretty nice, mate. Hi. And you had 500 grams extra. Now, a 500 gram weight penalty doesn't actually add up to all that much in terms of time, even at the top of an 18 kilometre climb like this one. Maybe just 20 seconds. Now, it's potentially really costly on a summit finish, but if the road goes down again, does the increased descending performance of your disc brakes actually mean you can make that time up? Hmm. Off you go then. Remember, it's not a race. No. That would be a little bit stupid on open roads like we've got here today. But normally, sight and myself are pretty evenly matched when it comes to descending. So if we just cruise down, we should get a good comparison. Cold and late, individual pursuit. We're on. Pretty clear then that disc brakes do give you more confidence. And we found that out before, but here on a road where the risks of getting it wrong are so big, that's clearly made quite a big difference. So what conclusions can we draw from our day of playing about here on the Col de Tourmalet in the name of scientific research? Yeah, scientific. Yeah, well, I think we can safely say, at least from a performance point of view, that discs are more than ready to be used in the pro peloton. Now, safety is still a concern for some people, but in our opinions, at least, we think it should be some way down your list of things to be scared of if you are involved in a mass pileup. What are your top five things to be scared of, Dan, in a mass pileup? Uh, well, well, tarmac, that's pretty hard. Can't Chain rings, it. they're quite sharp. Maggie Bagstedt landing on top of you, that was a big concern. Yeah, we should was... probably save this one actually for another video. That's, that's a great one. But, and this is a big but, how on earth do you make sure that all 20 teams in a race are say, using the same axle standards, the same disc size, and the same hub spacing? Because at the moment, it feels like there's about 20 different standards. So if you did go back to neutral service for a spare wheel, the likelihood of getting one that's compatible with your bike is gonna be pretty slim. Yeah, it is a major issue. And in our opinion, it's gonna be a big enough hurdle to potentially keep discs out of the Pro Peloton for a little bit longer at least. Good job we're not in the pro peloton then, Si. We can just enjoy the performance benefits. Indeed we can. And to make the most of the performance benefits of either your discs or your rim brakes, then why not watch a little video from GCN up here, how to brake like a pro. Yeah, and if you want to improve your descending, we've got a video on that as well, and you can find that just down there. Yeah, but subscribe to GCN, because it is free, and you might as well. Just and you, you'll get all that content into your inbox, won't you, as it comes out. Yeah, and it helps you find it quicker anyway, even if you don't. Yeah, Every time lots of benefits. Log on to YouTube. It's quite a good thing for free, actually, isn't it? The old subscribing thing. There aren't many great things for free, Dan, but I think GCN is probably one of them. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> <laughs>